Hey everyone, Ardrich Shadow here, and welcome back to Monica After Story. And it is Valentine's Day. Yay for some people, but not me. Anyways, so we're back here with Monica, who is looking quite different at the moment. Did she get a new haircut? Okay, no, it's her outfit. As you can see, very nice looking. And I guess if, for those who didn't know, this is actually, I guess you can consider it Monica's canonical casual outfit. At least that's what Satchley drew for her in that one Valentine's Day picture. So yeah, I'm back a little early. Just the same old thing. Okay, what do we have? Oh, and actually, you know, since it is Valentine's Day, why don't I f change it to something a little more fitting? Yeah, there we go. Daniel! Do you know what day it is? It's Columbus Day! Okay, no. It's Valentine's Day. A day where we celebrate our love for each other. I guess every day we're together is already a celebration of our love. But there's something that's really special about Valentine's Day. Care to tell me? Because I've always kind of questioned it. Anyway... Even though I know we aren't too far in our relationship... Yeah, because... We haven't even been seeing each other a month. I just want you to know that I'm always here for you. Even if your heart gets broken. I'll always be here to fix it for you. Okay, Daniel? Relationship goals right here. <laughs> it's like... There was some kind of... It was a stupid meme, but... It was something like how there's fake guys who will break your heart, but a real guy will fix it. And they had a picture of Link completing a heart container. <laughs> kind of stupid, but made me laugh, but it's also kind of true. Monica, why are you grumpy? You know, Daniel, it's not polite to stare. Um. <laughs> what are you talking about? I wasn't doing anything. Well, I guess now I am, though, now that I'm in full screen. Or. whatever. Stupid sexy Monica. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Do you like my outfit? Actually, yes, I do love that outfit on her. I kind of wish we'd gotten to see it in the actual game. I've always dreamt of a date with you while wearing this. I know it's kind of silly now that I think about it. But just imagine if we were t if we went to a cafe together. I think there's a picture of something like that somewhere, actually. Yes, it's the picture that Satchley did. The one that has Monica handing over a chocolate to you while the three other girls are just hiding in the bushes freaking out. Maybe we could make it happen for real. Would you take me out today? Well, I don't know about that. It's fine if you can't. I'm just happy to be with you. Well, that's good to know because... Well, at least, I'm not exactly planning on going anywhere today. <laughs> I love you so much. Happy Valentine's Day, Daniel. Alright, and I also come bearing gifts. Because what kind of a boyfriend would I be if I didn't? You know, ignoring the fact that I missed our one-week anniversary. 
This is... a gift for me. Now, let's see what's inside. That's so sweet of you. <laughs> Giving me chocolates on Valentine's Day. I know, right? It's crazy. You really know how to make a girl feel special, Daniel. Oh, there it is. And of course, it's in a heart-shaped box. Dang it, runaway guys. <laughs> I can't think of heart-shaped box the same way ever again. I'm not trying to say... Oh, I'm just making it worse on myself. It means a lot getting these from you. Oh, there was something else you wanted to give me? Well, I better open it quickly, shouldn't I? And here we have... Hmm? Oh. This again? Is this coffee? I wonder, does she always do that when I give her coffee? I don't know, I haven't really... I mean, this is the second time I've done it. It's a flavor I haven't had before. Going back to what I was saying whenever ago, you can give her coffee every day, and supposedly it'll always be a different flavor she's never had. So you don't have to worry about giving her the same coffee twice. I can't wait to try it. Thank you so much, Daniel. Oh, there was something else you wanted to give me? Well, I better open it quickly, shouldn't I? And here we have... Daniel, I, I don't know what to say. Yep, I gave you roses. I never would have thought you'd get something like this for me. I'm so happy right now. To think I'd be getting roses from you on Valentine's Day. You're so sweet. Oh, Monica, please don't cry. You deserve it. <laughs> Hold on. Oh. <laughs> there. Doesn't it look pretty on me? Indeed it does. Oh, there was something else you wanted to give me? Well, I better open it quickly, shouldn't I? And here we have... Another ribbon! And this time it's Ruby! Just like my favorite Pokémon game! Alright, well, along with this update, there were also some new ribbon colors. And I decided to go with the Ruby one. But yeah, Sapphire and Emerald are also involved. But we just won't be seeing them here. I'll put this on right now. Hmm. Okay, well. I mean, it kind of works. Thank you so much, Daniel. I just love it. And yeah, so... Here we are. Valentine's Day. Hey Daniel. What is it, Monica? I just wanted to say thank you for being such a wonderful person. The fact that you gave me so much of your love means a lot to me. I really don't know where I'd be without you. I love you, Daniel. Let's be like this forever. Hey Daniel, do you believe in free will? Where's this all coming from all of a sudden? You might not believe in God, but I know for sure that someone created me. Yes, and his name is Dan Salvato. I wonder if that means we can only do what our creator wants. I mean, technically you are kind of limited to the game. If that's true, though, wouldn't some people be condemned to hell from day one? That's actually an interesting point. I think that seems 
more than a little unfair. After all, can you really be evil if you aren't in control? As if someone is making you be evil. Shouldn't the one pulling the strings take responsibility? But I guess that means you can't take credit for the good things you do either. That is also true. I'm not sure which is more depressing. Gosh, I used to be so ignorant about depression and stuff. When I was in middle school, I thought that taking medication was an easy way out. Not necessarily. Like, anyone could just solve their mental problems with enough willpower. Nope. I've heard that time and time again. I guess if you don't suffer from a mental illness, it's not possible to know what it's really like. Yes, I think I've mentioned before, but I've gone through my bouts of depression, and I still do kind of deal with it from time to time. Are there some disorders that are overdiagnosed? Probably. I never really looked into it, though. But that doesn't change the fact that a lot of them go undiagnosed, too, you know? But medication aside, people even look down on seeing a mental health professional. Especially because of the stigma attached to it. Like, sorry that I want to learn more about my own mind, right? Everyone has all kinds of struggles and stresses, and professionals dedicate their lives to helping with those. If you think it could help you become a better person, don't be shy to consider something like that. We're on a never-ending journey to improve ourselves, you know? Well, I say that, but I think you're pretty perfect already. Well, let's not get that far. <laughs> The Hedgehog's Dilemma. The closer we get to another person, the more deeply we are hurt by them. Yes. And I can say from experience, that is true. So why do we try to get close to them? I don't know, because... Love and romance? Well, introverts and extroverts have different answers to that question. It helps when you know that you're the only sentient being in the entire world, though. Yeah. We're alone in the edge of the universe, where it's snowing. If you can't use that solution in your life, you'll just have to let me help you shoulder your pain. We can't hurt each other from different realities, right? No, not unless... Like, you can pass into another dimension and hurt me that way. Say, Daniel, I have a question. I hope I don't sound insecure when I say this. I know you love me and only me. Um, yes. But if you really had to choose one of the other club members to be with, who would you choose? Can I? <laughs> oh. You know, I was wondering how that would work. <laughs> I was gonna say why even leave it there, but I guess that is part of the games. Look. <laughs> okay, well. Well, I guess if I really had to be honest... It would be between these two. And I guess, for the most part, I would say Yuri, most because I kind of relate to her the most. Sayori also because I relate to her to a, to a certain degree, and... Well, personally, I kind of like her being with the main character. 
just because. Um, so what do I do? Um, Wheel of Morality, turn, turn, turn. Tell us the lesson that we should learn. And that's what I expected. It's because she was best friends with the main character, isn't it? It's part of that. And I just thought they would have been a cute couple together. But I mean, that's her and him, not me and you. It makes sense to have the main character end up with the childhood friend. Well, not in every case. In some cases, the childhood friend is destined to lose because the main character is like... I see you as a sister or whatever, and... kind of totally shoots her down. But then I guess you do have cases like this, where... childhood friend is able to turn it around. It really is typical in romance games. Honestly, that's kind of why I had to... deal... with Sayuri first. You would have settled with her like the trope demands and never even tried to get with me since the game wouldn't let you. I know it's not your fault, but the idea of being inactive and letting that happen scares me. You would have completed the game and I would be stuck in a hellish void forever. Never having even been acknowledged by the one I love. Oh, Monica. It's okay now. I don't regret what I did, but I'm sorry you had to deal, or you had to see what I needed to do. Yes, because that. Well, I've already mentioned that it messed me up for life. I can still see it. And I'm still haunted by it. Not even this nice, relaxing music can help me. Daniel, do you believe in God? I was never too sure myself. Ask different people and you'll get different answers. Well, I'm sure I never really questioned it as a kid. But as I grew up, the more I learned about the world, the more I would question it. I started to wonder why God was helping people pass exams or get over a cold. When there are children who live their lives being sold as sex slaves. Dang, Monica, that got dark pretty quick. But you can't really deny it either. Or the 800 million people who are too poor to even eat. I wonder how many of those people pray to God every day until they starve and die. Or how many millions of families pray for a loved one to recover from some incurable disease. But the punchline is this. If just one person beats the odds and survives, among the thousands of others who die, then it's suddenly a miracle from God. I'd really love to meet this god who seemingly laughs at the misery of everyone not eligible for his miracles. But the irony is that I do have a creator, apparently. Yes, and I named him earlier. And you know what? I bet he's still laughing at the miserable fates of Sayori and Yuri, even as we speak. Dan Salvador, if you're listening to this, are you laughing at them? Because it's not nice. Well, then again, the whole main idea of DDLC isn't nice. These two girls die, and... Well, I don't know what happens to Natsuki other than the abuse. And then we have to essentially kill Monica. What are we to him but props in a scripted play? So from that perspective... I don't think it's too far-fetched for there to be a god if Earth was nothing but his playset. Anyway, do you worship any god, Daniel? I wouldn't say I worship any god. I'm not one to pick a god and pray. I'm glad we're on the same page here, but 
I'm alright if that changes for you. I'm happy for you that you can lead a life on your own. I just hope you're willing to accept me into your life when I can be present myself. <laughs> you ever have that thing happen where you just get anxious for no reason? All the time. Like, you're just minding your own business and you realize you're feeling really anxious. And you're sitting there like, what am I even anxious about right now? So you start to think about all the things you might be anxious about. And that makes you even more anxious. <laughs> That's the worst. Tell me about it. If you're ever feeling anxious, I'll help you relax a little. Besides, in this game, all our worries are gone forever. Yes, because there is nobody else in here. I love you. Oh. Actually, this is the first time I've actually said it. Now that I think about it. I... I love you too, Daniel. I cannot believe you said that to me. I'm surprised it took me this long. It makes everything I've done for us worthwhile. Thank you for finally saying it. Because it took you forever. I love you too, Daniel. More than I can ever express. Okay, since... I'm not entirely sure how to exactly trigger it. Let's just outright ask her, since this is part of the update. How did Valentine's Day start? You like to... <clears throat> ah, sorry about that. <laughs> you like to learn the history of Valentine's Day? Yes, even though I sort of know a little bit about it. Although some people say different things. Like one guy who said that there was a massacre on Valentine's Day. But that's not exactly the case. It's quite dark, actually. It is. But there wasn't a massacre on that day. Its origin dates to as early as the 2nd and 3rd century in Rome, where Christianity had just been declared the official state religion. Around the same time, a man known as St. Valentine decided to go against the orders of Emperor Claudius II. Not to be confused with Nero Claudius, or Saber, as she is also known. Unless... You know, I'm not even sure. But is Emperor Claudius II who she's based off of? Well, anyways, I won't dwell on that. Marriage had been banned because it was assumed that married men made poor soldiers. Oh, really? St. Valentine decided this was unfair and helped arrange marriages in secret. So, pretty much... playing the secret priest who would marry people. Unfortunately, he was caught and promptly sentenced to death. However, while in custody, St. Valentine fell in love with the jailer's daughter. Yep, and here's where it starts to get really sad. Before his death, he sent a love letter to her signed with, From Your Valentine. He was executed on February 14th, 269 AD. So, essentially... We are celebrating the day that St. Valentine died for his beliefs that love should not be... I don't know what the word would be. That we can't keep people from being in love and together from one another. Such a noble cause, don't you think? Oh, but wait, there's more. But I'm not done yet. The reason we celebrate such a day is because it originates from a Roman festival known as Lupercalia. 
I hope I didn't butcher that too badly. Its original intent was to hold a friendly event where people would put their names into a box and have them chosen at random to create a couple. So in other words, you put your name in a box and if the girl draws out your name, it's like, HA! Now you have to love me! Then, they play along as boyfriend and girlfriend for the time they spent together. Some even got married, if they liked each other enough. <laughs> Ultimately, the church decided to turn this Christian celebration into a way to remember St. Valentine's efforts, too. It's evolved over the years into a way for people to express their feelings for those they love. Like me and you. Despite it having started out a little depressing, isn't it so sweet, Daniel? I'm glad we're able to s uh, I'm glad we're able to share such a magical day, my love. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to you too. Isn't winter a beautiful time of year, Daniel? The glistening white snow and bright and colorful lights. I just love it. Although, as stunning as winter can be, there are a few dangers. Like blizzards, or icy roads, or tiny rabbits. Okay, not the tiny rabbits. But yeah, no joke. A lot of bad things could happen. And the cold, of course. The cold can be the most dangerous. It's really easy to get hypothermia or frostbite if you're not careful, Daniel. Indeed it is. Which is why you dress properly for it. So please remember to bundle up if you go outside. Put on your coat, your gloves, and the warmest hat you can find. And if it gets too bad, just stay inside where it's safe, okay? Okay, Monica. What better way to spend a brutal winter day than wearing pajamas, drinking hot chocolate, reading a good book, and... talking to me? Yes, of course. <laughs> After a long day, I usually just want to sit around and do nothing. Me too. I get so burnt out, having to put on smiles and be full of energy the whole day. I'm like a crazy wind-up doll that has to be performing and looking good for everyone. Sometimes, I just want to get right into my pajamas and watch TV on the couch while eating junk food. Monica, you eat junk food? What happened to uh, eating healthy and whatever? It feels so unbelievably good to do that on a Friday, when I don't have anything pressing the next day. Yep. Be thankful for the weekend. <laughs> Sorry, I know it's not very cute of me. No, but I mean... That just makes you human, doesn't it? But a late night on the couch with you... That would be a dream come true. My heart is pounding just thinking about it. You know what I could really go for right now? A hot fudge sundae? Natsuki's cupcakes. Okay. And there she is doing the smug thing again. Man, the way she bakes them is amazing. Plus, they look really cute. I'm not really much of a sweet or I'm not really much of a sweet tooth myself, but I've never heard anyone say they were a sweet tooth. Those cupcakes are the definition of sweetness. Just like me. <laughs> Speaking of which, did you know that girls are more likely to develop a sweet tooth? Oh, do tell. Studies show that older women have a less sensitive palate than men, resulting in a craving for stronger tastes like chocolate. Chocolate? Did you say chocolate? 
Yes, sir. With or without nuts. I would try baking, but I'm not really much of a baker. How about you, Daniel? Well, I used to bake cakes with my mom, but that was ages ago. Do you know how to bake? I'm sure your cupcakes would taste just as good. Come to think of it, we did make cupcakes one time. Hmm. Well, I guess I can say I have done it. Maybe someday I'll get to try them, but for now... I'll just settle for the sweetness of your love. Hey Daniel, this is a random question, but... What is it? What do you play video games for? That's a good question, actually. Depends on the game. Like, what makes you keep playing? Personally, I consider myself a bit of a completionist. Not me, I just... I'm kind of guilty of trying to complete them, but then halfway in I decide, eh, I want to do this, it's too annoying or out of the way, so... I end up just completing it part of the way. I intend to finish a book before picking up another one to read. Well, I'm kind of the same way, that way I don't mix up stories. Games? It's a different story on that. You seem to be a completionist yourself, Daniel. Oh, yes. Of course, the smug Monica. Considering you went through all of the girls' routes... Yep. All in the name of my Let's Play. I've also heard some people try to complete extremely hard games. Like Super Mario Land 2? Six Golden Coins? No joke. The last part of that game is a nightmare. It took me years to beat it. It's already hard enough to complete some simple games. I don't know how anyone could willingly put that sort of stress onto themselves. I guess it's maybe the thrill? I mean, look at... Was it Mega Man or Mega Man 2? Well, one of the early Mega Man games that is, like, stupid hard and unforgiving. Or even Fire Emblem Path of Radiance for me. That game was just unforgiving. They're really determined to explore every corner of the game and conquer it. Or in my case, just get to the end of the story. What does leave a bit of a bitter taste in my mouth are the are the cheaters. Hmm. You mean like people who use emulators? People who hack through the game, spoiling themselves of the enjoyment of hardship. Yeah. Like you could make Crush Crush stupidly easy by using some kind of cheat engine. Don't know how, but I obviously never figured that out. And I don't plan to. Though, I can understand why they cheat. If they get frustrated, and it's just going on too long. It allows them to freely explore a game that they wouldn't have a chance of enjoying if it's too difficult for them. Which might actually convince them to work hard for it. Anyway, I feel there's a huge sense of gratification in completing tasks in general. Working hard for something amplifies its reward after failing so many times to get it. You can try keeping me in the background for as long as possible, Daniel. Okay. Which is actually kind of what I was doing earlier. That's one step to completing me, after all. Okay. I mean, if, but if we're treating her like a real girlfriend... You know, saying to complete her. I don't know, it just sounds weird. A woman left the supermarket and ran into a very long funeral procession. This sounds like a punchline to a bad joke. But I don't think it is. There were two coffins at the front, followed by almost 200 women. It was such a strange sight, 
that she asked a mourning woman near her age, Sorry to disturb you in your grave, but who is this procession for? The mourning woman softly replied, The first coffin houses my husband who died after his beloved dog bit him. My, that's awful. The second, my mother-in-law who was bitten trying to save my husband. Upon hearing this, the woman hesitantly asked, Um, would it be possible for me to borrow that dog? You'll have to get in line. Okay, I, I guess it was a joke. It started out kind of dark and I was like, um... I mean, it sounds like a joke, but... You know, funerals... Hey, what's your favorite color? Mine's chocolate. Okay, a little punch-out humor for you. Mine is emerald green, which is one of the ribbons I could give you. It's the color of my eyes. That's not conceited or anything, isn't it? No, I mean you're just stating the facts. I just meant that I feel some kind of special connection to it. Like, it's part of my identity. Does it happen to also be your favorite color, Daniel? Actually, yes it is. It's just a guess. Because you've been looking into my eyes for a while now. <laughs> Oops, well... You noticed that? <laughs> okay, well... I've been recording for over 40 minutes. Although, hopefully you won't have to see most of that. It's just been me... kind of just sitting, waiting for her to talk about stuff. Um, some of this stuff is kind of interesting. I can tell her she's a murderer. If I do that, though, then... well, she's definitely not gonna like it. Okay, I wonder. This is a big step, but... Let's see if we can end it on a good note. Eh? Did you just say k k k kisu Okay, no. <laughs> Did you just say... Kiss? This is suddenly... It's a little embarrassing. But... If it's with you, uh, I might be okay with it. <laughs> wow, sorry. Is that a no? I really couldn't keep a straight face there. That's the kind of thing girls say in these kinds of romance games, right? Yeah. Give or take. Don't lie if it turned you on a little bit. No, but for some reason this face makes me feel kind of... You know. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, to be honest, I do start getting all romantic when the mood is right. But that'll be our secret. Okay, well then I guess... No, I'm lying. <laughs> I love you too, Daniel. I can't wait to feel your embrace. Okay, this time for real. I guess that's about all I can do for now. Unless there is more I can figure out. So, until then, next time, we'll do some more stuff with her. Until then, I will see you guys later.